Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech, and I wasn't able to get everything undone, but I do my lighting out and back in the downstairs office. And full disclosure, because <clears throat> people have brought this up many times, audio sucks because I need to replace my microphone unit. It's a cord, but that stuff's packed away. Um, I just finished up stuff with Instagram with fashion. It's the nails and the top, so that covers that. But <clears throat> I'm actually working on a computer here. It's with a 10th Gen i3, and here's the motherboard working with. So, ASRock. Um, as you guys know, I do like ASRock, and there's a couple reasons for it. Uh, more so has to do with the RGB <clears throat> functionality of it. But um, let's go ahead and go through this box, see what she comes with, and uh, see what this B460 Phantom Gaming 4 is all about. So, let's take the board off for a second. We have your user manual. We have your CD. We have two SATA connectors and two and about two screws, and that's pretty much it. And I'll actually need one of these for the build. Keep this guy here. Let's turn it that way. Let's take a look at this board layout. So right off the bat here, I see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But this is a B460 board, so you're not gonna get much more than like 95 watt CPU. I.O. is pretty standard, all things considered. You do have a slot for a Wi-Fi card. What I find interesting is there's nothing to actually like put here. So it was like, we'll put it here and maybe you could wire it down here, whatever. But anyway, so we have two USB 2, um, old fashioned, Keyboard, mouse, HDMI, Ethernet, and then one, two, three, four USB and 5.1 surround. But the reason why this board is a little under 100 bucks, the main reason why I stick with ASRock is two reasons: addressable RGB, regular RGB. So this is going to have a ton of compatibility with RGB, uh, and that's usually the difficult part that you end up dealing with is if you have a board, you'll end up having addressable, but not regular, vice versa. Fans, Jesus. Um, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is a ludicrous amount of fans, like absolutely ridiculous. But regardless, let's flip this around so I can see the board a little better <clears throat> so we do have here's the audio chip right here we do have AMD crossfire but not SLI support so do note that uh, you do have one two three four five six SATA three you have USB three you have one and two M.2 but do know this is M.2 Wi-Fi so we talked about this piece up here at the corner you'd have to run that down to here. Uh, but the actual M.2 is here. What you'll notice though is, is there's a there's punch out right here. So that was for them to add it, I guess, with a similar board design, maybe an upgraded version. Uh, and then just your standard, um, you know, you, have, you only have one internal USB. That's, that's interesting. I, I actually do find it interesting. So if you have a bunch of USB 2 ports, you might potentially run into a problem there. Uh, but you do have your USB 3, and then you do have, this is a full ATX board. Um, VRM cooling is, it's not bad. Just, I mean, you're not going, you can't overclock with this board, right? So these being exposed is not the end of the world. You're going to be, you know, 100 watts max. So, you know, it was at 1.3 volts, you're, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of 60 to 75 watts. I mean, you have an exhaust fan, you know, the top or bottom, you're fine. This VRM cooling is fine. Uh, it's most likely you have a bunch on the V core, um, you know, probably these eight on the V core with um, doublers, and then that's probably the SOC. So, this is my very first LGA. What, what, what sock is this again? 12, 1200 installation. So, Ah, cool, so I don't have to break anything, anything open. This is an i3-10100, and I bought this alongside of a Ryzen 3. 
3300X. And we're gonna see which one's faster. And I honestly do not believe in testing this on a Z series board. Now, for the testing methodology, I will admit I bought a much more expensive AMD board. That is actually due to the fact that AMD board availability is zero on the V550 platform. In fact, I had two boards on on pre-order and they never shipped. So I actually had a, I had this exact board, the uh, Phantom Gaming 4, on pre-order, and a week after the pre-order dropped, which was the 9th or 9th, 18th or 19th, still nothing. So we'll find out there. So we'll go ahead and take these two guys here. We're going to line it up with the two here. So it's going to go like that. Wiggle. Now when I do the actual testing between these two, I, I haven't decided if I'm going to do stock fans or not. Um, the i3 is most likely not going to be thermal limited, but the Ryzen 3 might, so I might do the Be Quiet Cooler that I have, um, which I have yet to actually review on this channel, so hopefully that will be coming soon. Get these back up there. So we'll do slots two and four. I believe Intel and AMD do share that. Perfect. Everybody was looking for it. For an under $100 board, I can't really complain. Um, I would have liked, you know, a full-size M.2 and just have two of them instead of a short and a long one. I, I don't, I'm not upset about the lack of, of USB 2 because we pretty much are on USB 3 at this point. So having one and one isn't the end of the world. But it, it definitely is a little bit low on I.O. There is no USB Type-C, so that's definitely kind of a downer. There's only six USB ports, and two of them are version 2. So that kind of sinks in that regard. But I feel like the other part of it is is it's pretty high quality. What, what did I say? Six, seven, eight fan headers, um, enough SATA ports, enough memory slots, plenty to be able to fuel your RGB. So if you're looking to spend under 100 bucks, I, I'm not sure what else is in this lineup necessarily, but I really think you get a lot of good value. You don't get some frills and some extras, but if you want performance and utility, I think this kind of packs a pretty good punch. Um, if you like the video, like it, dislike, dislike, leave a comment, get subscribed. If you want to buy this or anything else on Amazon through my paid affiliate code and link description below, do note I do get a commission. Uh, I think it's anywhere from like 1% or 2% up to 15%. PC parts are much lower, trust me. Uh, but I do get a kickback for that. And that's it. As always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech, and I'll see you all later on down the road.